Hello there, ever feel like there is an invisible force keeping you from getting things done? You're not alone. Procrastination has been the arch nemesis of many of us. But what if I told you that within the next few minutes, you'll unlock the secrets to defeating it? Today we're unpacking 5 straightforward strategies to help you with this frustrating thing. And stay tuned, because 2 amazing bonus tips are waiting for you at the end of this video. They are absolutely easy to follow, but fun and effective at the same time. I love them. Alright, before we jump right into it, let's shed some light on why it's crucial to be proactive when it comes to this topic. You know, we've all had those days when we think we should wait until tomorrow. Actually, if it happens once, it's not really a big deal. But we might procrastinate on something for many days until being close to deadline, and only then suddenly hurry up and get started. It usually feels quite bad. I tend to get the feeling of criticizing myself when it happens. You see, often the root of procrastination isn't just about discipline or motivation, it's about not tapping into your natural rhythms. Have you ever noticed how during certain parts of the day you feel more energized, more focused, while at other times even the simplest tasks feel exhausting. There are things people call 3 pm slump or post lunch deep. It's the observation that the level of some physical performance shows a slight decrease in the early afternoon. It's when you feel a bit drowsy and less alert at this part of the day. Actually, it's a real thing. It's a phenomenon that can occur even when the individual has had no lunch and is unaware of time of the day. It doesn't happen to all individuals though, but the chances are some of you, my friends, have faced it many times. 3 pm slump is a good example of prime time. I mean, the opposite of prime time. Let's suppose you know you tend to get less productive around 3 pm, so try not to plan demanding tasks and most prioritized tasks for that time of the day. Find out when you tend to get most things done. For some people like me, it's their mornings. There was a study in which they matched university students' self-reported chronotype and times they felt at their best. No surprise, peak of definite morning types was at the beginning of the day and evening types in the evening. You can see the picture right here. Why am I telling you this? Because there isn't a universal formula like wake up at 7 am. If you're not an early bird and you can adjust your schedule according to your chronotype, it's probably the best thing you can do. And this is how university days which generally start to fix times in the morning aren't so easy for people with late chronotypes. Right, I appreciate you staying up. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Now on to our next enlightening tip, which might seem counterintuitive at first. We live in a world of endless choices, from what to eat, where, to which tasks to tackle first. And while choice can be empowering, an overload of it can actually be a bad thing. Yes, too many choices can be paralyzing. There is an interesting concept called analysis paralysis. It's when you overthink a decision to the point where you feel stuck and can't move forward or take action. It's like being frozen by too many choices or by overanalyzing a situation. Faced with an overwhelming number of options, individuals may become paralyzed, finding it challenging to make any decision at all. This can lead to delays or even forgoing the decision entirely. Can't agree more. This is what happened to me many times. Actually, I'm not a fan of doing million unrelated tasks that require context switching during my day. It feels too chaotic. And it seems to me that it takes a substantial amount of energy to immerse yourself in a new context. Each decision we make takes up mental energy, leading to what's called decision fatigue. Of course, I'm not talking about eliminating tasks only because they include difficult steps that require thinking. I'm talking about reducing some decisions proactively. For example, a simple to-do list is a powerful tool. You wake up, do your morning routine, and you know what you should do next. You don't even have to think about it. You don't have to decide whether you should scroll social media and then start your focused work or first do a work and after that scroll Instagram. You already know that from 8 to 10 am you are supposed to be working on something specific. And yes, I prefer creating to-do lists in the evening. I don't have to think about it at the beginning of the next day. So it's one of the ways you can reduce the number of choices you have to make even without eliminating any tasks. And if you do it, you may save some energy that you can use during your prime time I've been talking about. Now, while structuring your day and cutting down on choices might help you fight procrastination, sometimes we all feel that inexplicable tug of inertia, even when we know what we ought to be doing. Ever had one of those days when, even with a clear to-do list, your usual workspace just feels stagnant? This brings me to our next tip, the power of a change in scenery. We can become accustomed to the same surroundings day in and day out. It's easy to fall into a routine that slowly turns into a rut. So what can you do? Shake things up a little. Simply move into a different room, stepping into a local cafe, even just rearranging your workspace can offer a fresh perspective. Think of it as a mini reset for your brain. It's almost like pricking yourself into thinking it's a fresh start. You'd be surprised how often a change of scenery can act as a wonderful antidote to procrastination. It's not about running away from your tasks, but rather giving your mind a new backdrop to tackle them with renewed vigor. And a great way to change your scenery is exposure to nature. Exposure to elements of more natural environments leads to cognitive gains. It has been shown to improve performance on working memory, cognitive flexibility, and intentional control tasks. Fret not, because integrating nature into your routine doesn't always require week-long camping trips or distant mountain hikes. It's much simpler than that. 
allocate just 10 to 15 minutes of your break to walk in a nearby park or even just around your neighborhood. For lunch breaks outdoors, instead of eating at your desk, try having your lunch outside. A simple change, but it can make a world of difference in breaking the monotony. You're still with me, my friend? A couple more tips, and we move to the bonus part, as promised. One of the biggest culprits of procrastination isn't just not knowing where to start, it's the fear that where we start won't be good enough. Many of us get caught in the loop of wanting everything to be just perfect, but embracing the concept that done is often better than perfect can be a game changer. Starting with an imperfect draft, sketch, prototype, or whatever applies to your task frees you from the weight of perfectionism. It's liberating. Once you have something tangible in front of you, refining it becomes much easier than starting at a blank canvas. And most importantly, momentum built on action. I'm always experienced it while creating my new videos. When you've got a draft, it's so much easier to continue from this point than starting with nothing. Ever heard of the phrase, you can't steer a parked car? Well, the same goes for our tasks and projects. Start moving, start doing, and as you progress, you'll find the direction and make the necessary adjustments. Perfection can be a pursuit, but it shouldn't be a prerequisite to begin. Keep that in mind. Now let's move to the tip that's most difficult one to set up, but I believe your future self will thank you for it. That exaggeration, this thing transformed my life. And I don't know anymore how I used to live without it. It's easy to get lost in different areas of your life, different tasks, priorities, dreams, plans. It's all swarming in your head. Sometimes you forget things, like your friend's birthday. And the good thing to do is to let it go from time to time. Do I mean simply ignoring those things? Absolutely not. I'm talking about a system that's gonna enable you to store everything you need without worrying about forgetting it. Exocortex. Every important and even not so important thing will be there. I'm talking about a productivity system like GTD, which stands for getting things done. In simple words, there is a place, in my case phone and desktop application, in which you accumulate your ideas during your day. Like things you need to buy, things you need to remember, phone number you should add to your contacts, almost anything. All of it is added to your inbox. And then, usually in the evening or morning, you sort these things. Schedule some of them, maybe delete some things. This way, everything is locked. You don't forget almost anything anymore. Sounds complicated, but you'll get used to it. There are many options on how to do it, but I personally found getting things done as the best system of those I tried. I'll create more videos on this topic, so if you're excited about it, subscribe and hit that notification button. Now guys, we're finally entering the bonus part. First, two-minute rule. Actually, I heard of it for the first time from the book on productivity system I was talking about. The rule is straightforward. If a task takes less than two minutes to complete, do it immediately. Sounds simple, right? But the beauty lies in its simplicity. Often we delay small tasks thinking, oh, I'll get to it later. Later. But these tiny tasks pile up and collectively become this daunting mountain of chores. Of course, it's not universal. You won't be able to change your water filter while you're commuting, but still, there will be times when it's gonna help you with procrastination. It's like a series of small victories that sets the tone for the rest of your day. And the second rule is called 5 seconds rule. It's quite fun. I haven't found modern research on this, even though I heard it does exist, but it doesn't really matter in this case. There is no harm at all in trying. Next time you find yourself hesitating before starting doing your task, you must physically move within 5 seconds or your brain will kill this idea. Sounds intense? It's fun. Picture this. Your alarm goes off early in the morning. You have that brief instinct. I should get up now and seize the day. But if you wait longer than 5 seconds, you might find yourself diving into excuses. Instead, count backwards. 5, 4, 3, 2, one and spring into action. Whether it's getting out of bed, beginning a workout, starting on a task, or even just sending an email, you've been putting off. The power of the five second rule lies in its ability to push you from thinking to doing. It bridges the gap between intention and action. I truly hope this video is helpful. Subscribe if you want to see more and definitely have a good day.